welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I am your host, D Boss, and I'm just letting everybody know that you can watch me weeknights, Monday to Friday, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12 a.m. And we're on Caravision in 28 different countries, included the London, UK, also on Bell 5, channel 658. If you're in Canada and we're through the various um, cable channel network that offers through the US. And in case you missed all that, you could go to my YouTube channel, D Boss Networks, and subscribe, share, and you can watch all the wonderful guests that I did. So I hope everybody's doing their 15 minutes of laughing per day because that helps release all the endomorphins in your body, lowers your blood pressure, makes you look youthful. Um, it also tones your abs, but you make sure you still have to still go to the gym. It just keeps that. If you don't have anybody to laugh with, you could just call somebody. You could um, just, you know, put something funny on. And if, you, if it's a really extreme case, is that, okay, you know what? I don't have anybody to do that laughing with. Then you have to go sign up for laughing classes or something. So you could release those because it's good for you. What you put out is what you're going to receive back. So this is something that I do every day and all the time. So I, I encourage everybody else to do that. Well, right now we're going to hear something from Vital Steps, Vital Health from one of our sponsors, uh, Joanne James. And after that, I'm going to tell you about our wonderful guest coming on. Welcome to your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. I'm Joanne James. Today, we're talking about exercise snacking. It's a fantastic way to fit exercise into your busy schedule. Exercise snacking is about taking small bites of exercise throughout the day. And it could look like this, anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes of movement in some way, shape or form is an exercise snack. You can, instead of taking the elevator, take the stairs up a flight, or you can go for a brisk walk for five minutes. If you're watching TV, you can sit down and do some stretches or sit and stand to work those legs. When you're at work, do some stretches at the desk. All of that is exercise snacking. The beauty is it does not require a membership and neither do you need equipment. So take advantage of those small pockets of time that you have throughout the day to do some form of movement. You'll feel great. I'm Joanne James and this has been your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. See you next time. Thank you, Joanne James, for that health, healthy snacking tip. And people, please do not go in your kitchen and say, I've got to cook something healthy. It's not that. It's about you getting up and doing some exercise. If you've been sitting at your laptop, which a lot of people do, because there are a lot of people using devices and sometimes, and I'm bad because I let's say at five minutes, I'm going to get up and I don't next time it's half an hour. Then I say, okay, you know, next five minutes, the next time it's an hour. Next thing you know, you're sitting there for two hours and you still haven't even got up. So, you know, we encourage you to get up, move, do some kind of movement, just pause. You can always pause the movies now and stuff like that and just get up and say, okay, let's just stretch, do something, and then you can go back to the movie. But anyways, I got some real special people coming on here and, you know, they call him, him, the Spike Lee, but of course we're going to manifest that he gets everything along with that. So, and, and there's also some mother and it's not a mother. I mean, sorry, it's not his mother. It's a husband and wife team, and they're they're producers, uh, directors, and they're a founder of Hammer Productions. So, with no further ado, I introduce to you Howard and Mitzi Allen. Hi, thank you for having us. <laughs> Hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see you doing that. You're, you're laughing, so you're doing something good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here at Real Life Matters, everybody likes to know where um, everybody comes from and their cultural background. So go ahead. Well, uh, I am. I was born in Antigua and Barbuda, uh, but I grew up in Toronto, so I am a hybrid. I um, spent my formative years in Toronto, worked in the media there before moving to and uh, reconnecting with my roots, moving back to Antigua and finding love <laughs> well wait but you know something here hold on you said you said that you were from you, you came from antigua toronto then you went to move back there 
That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So you just pick up and go back. Well, that's okay. Some people like to do that. And then you meet, then of course you met Howard. Yes. The Spike Lee of the movie industry. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not laughing. All right. So you now, what's your background? Have you been in film or TV and stuff before? Howard? Yeah. You. Oh, me. Well, I, I am a, uh, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I'm a broadcast journalist and I work as a media consultant. And so my background is firmly in media and, uh, broadcast journalism. So I used to, uh, be on the news really as a reporter with, um, CFTO TV at CTV Canada. So that's my strength coming into this partnership was understanding media and production. Okay. All right. Now, Mr. Howard, yeah. <laughs> where, well, I guess you're from Antigua. And Bar I'm Antigua, <laughs> lived all my life in Antigua and uh, worked in television and video production in Antigua with a, with a local um, cable company. Okay. So was that a big persuasion for Mitzi, for you to tell Mitzi to come back? <laughs> well, I actually met him in Antigua. When I moved to Antigua and I decided I wanted to continue my career in media, we ended up at the same production company where I came in as a news and production manager. And uh, Howard was uh, the everything at that station. He was the uh, video engineer. He was the cameraman. He was the sound guy. He was the editor. We're talking Antigua, right? Antigua and Barbuda. Small island. Oh, here you came in for the kill. <laughs> I'm, I'm, from, I'm Canadian. I'm, I came from Antigua and I'm taking this man. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. We ended up making a movie about that. that our first film, The Sweetest Mango, is about how we met. And fell wow. in love. it's a romantic comedy that came out 23 years ago. So yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's for you is for you. Yeah. And, uh, yes. <laughs> all right. So since you guys come from Antigua and stuff, so and I, I really haven't had any guests coming on from Antigua, Barbuda. Oh, so yeah. um, can you tell us what your national dish is there and stuff like that? What kind of food that, so people are familiar? Yeah, so the national dish is called fungi and pepper pot. And the fungi is um, like the fufu in certain parts of Africa. And the cuckoo that uh, you would know from Barbados, right? Um. And, and uh, it's usually served with, uh, so it's the fungi, that's the fufu. And then the pepper pot is a mix of greens, including okra and uh, spinach and uh, different greens uh, boiled together. And, okay. it, and then it's also served with um, salt fish, salted codfish, stewed salted codfish. And then the other popular, other popular uh, uh, well, local dish is dukana, uh, mm -hmm. which would be in in Barbados would be like a conky. Okay. It's funny how people call the same things different names and then people get confused, you know? Like so it's great, grated um, <laughs> grated sweet potatoes and coconut, um, mixed with flour, and it's used to, uh, traditionally it was boiled in banana leaves. But uh, I, I think most people now put them in um, Aluminum foil. <laughs> well, you can. I think you can buy the banana. The banana. The banana leaves are cheap now. So <laughs> yeah, I think well, you, can you, can you can get them. You, know, you can get them now. So people probably. But before people used to do that aluminum foil, I remember. Yeah, yeah. But 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 like I said, if you want the authentic side of it, you just right. you're taking it out anyways, and you're eating yeah. it with a yeah. good cup of tea or your coffee. Or whatever you have, or you can even have that as a night snack. But yeah, <laughs> all right. So, what made you guys want to create Deep Blue, the movie that you guys are doing? 
Well, I think the uh, the impetus for it was uh, we were doing a lot of uh, documentaries on the environment, and we thought that these documentaries were preaching to the converted. So we thought it would be interesting to make a film uh, that would tell the same kind of stories, provide the, the same information, but would also be entertaining and uh, thought-provoking and start a discussion. So Howard began to write uh, the screenplay uh, 10 years ago. 10 yeah. years? Yeah. Yes. Well, the thing okay. is, while we were working on these documentaries, we ourselves were learning so much about environmental issues. Okay. And, and ecosystems and, and all of that. And uh, I was thinking to myself that uh, if, if we're pretty um, informed people <laughs> and we're now just learning some of this stuff, maybe it'd be good if we could put it in a doc, in, in, in a film, um, that provides some kind of uh, um, entertainment, but still has all of that same information in it and just make it um, easier to digest. Okay, so how long did it take to, to um, film this film? Well, the, the, the we went into production because the, the screenwriting started, writing the screenplay started in 2012, but we actually went into production in 20, May of 2019. Okay. And, um, two of our actors, our Canadian actors, had to come back to Canada to do some work and come back. And while they were away, COVID happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that held up production for a while. Uh, during COVID, we, we were able to get in, you know, a little bit of production work here and there until we were able to finally complete the project in, oh. in 2022. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and I hear you got a, one of the, a famous um, actor in there that you had to proceed with caution. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had uh, we had caution, who is Antigua and Barbuda's reggae ambassador. Mm -hmm. We have um, we have some folks that people have seen in other productions, so they will be in for a nice nice surprise. <laughs> okay, so. You guys hired, uh, okay, you say you had two people came from Canada. So oh, actually, I had four. Yeah. Oh, four. Four. Okay. Yes. Principal, uh, prince, uh, principal cast are Canadians, and we also have um, a cast of Antiguans and Barbudans. And so we brought in uh, four of those individuals that came to Antigua. Um, and then we had one actor who came out of the UK. Yeah. And um, and uh, with our our local talent, we pulled the cast together. Okay, and I know these productions aren't cheap. No, so. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you got you got to pull out some funding, or you got to get some funding to do it. Yes. Because well, you know a lot of people see these things on you know on the films and the the movie, but they don't realize how much money yes uh, entails yes. to do yes. those. Well, we've had our combination for us as independent uh, filmmakers. We are, our films, our production company is the main financer of our, I call it our movie habit of our feature films. And then we do product placements. And as time has gone by, because this is movie number five for us, uh, we've had people who have expressed confidence in, in our skills and our product and uh, have, have invested in the film. So this one, this movie number five, We've been able to get a lot of support uh, for the film, and we do uh, our standard thing is product placements. We have product placements in our movie, so that all helps us to pull together what we need to get it done. And still, you know, it's never enough, but at least it takes us across the finish line. And then you have to start to think about marketing and promotion, which in many cases, as you know, people put a lot more money into marketing and promoting the film than they did in actually, actually making, making the, the film. film, you know? Yeah. So well, that's, that's yeah. where I come in. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, that's what real life matters and your matter is deep. Yeah. Yeah, films and other films to do. So what what we what we say about what we do, it's feature filmmaking on a shoestring budget because we use 
our resources that are available to us within the region and further afield, and we're able to tap into um, what is around us and people who um, want to see Caribbean art and culture preserved on film, because there are a lot of people who are um, come on board because they like what we're about and what we're doing. It's not just about making a movie, it's preserving who we are as a people, you know, and, and telling our own stories, you know, the way we see ourselves and the way we want to show ourselves on screen, you know, and that has, that is very, very important to us. Well, I'm not from Antigua, but I can be in the next film. <laughs> you can. Be careful what you wish for. Yes. I, I'll, I'll tell I, you something. There I, I people to come say. down there. I, I don't mind. I remember in Toronto, I don't know if you remember this, Mitzi, in Toronto, when they used to fly some flights. So before you got to, like, okay, you if you're going to Barbados, Trinidad or something, the flight would go to Toronto, then land in Antigua. Yes. Well, there and yes. then go to Barbados and then drop the people off yes. and then go to <laughs> yes, yes, Antigua was very, very much the hub. Oh, yeah, very yeah, hard. that was a big thing, you know. It was like what, and they would let you get out and walk, but you couldn't really, you know, they told you not to go. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll just tell you something though. There are a lot of people who say, "Yes, I would like to be in your next film," and, and then when we, when, call, when we them, call on them, they they, 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 they start to shake. They need start to buckle. <laughs> they start to shake. They they can't. You know, they go, "Oh, okay, no, I don't know." <laughs> well, that won't yes. work because I'll have my suitcase ready and packed. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we will remember that this is being recorded. All right, all right, all right, all right. You can tell me, and I'll be, I'll be right there. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go. We're gonna watch the trailer. So okay, you said. Okay, before we go do that. Okay, you said your first mo movie was Sweet Mango. The sweetest, sweetest Mango. mango. Yeah. Sweetest Mango. Well, at least I got that part. Okay. <laughs> well, there's some mango in there. <laughs> okay. So the next, the, what's the second what, one? The second one was a movie called No Seed, which was a political drama. That was released in 2002, a year after The Sweetest Mango. And then we did Jabless, which was a, a movie based on Caribbean, well, Antiguan folklore. And then the fourth film was a movie called The Skin, which was based on Caribbean mythology. Mm -hmm. oh, and, and, it, and that was a thriller. That was a thriller, and it starred Jamaican film icon Carl Bradshaw. Yes. Yeah, you know him from. This was a thriller, you said. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So okay. from romantic, um, Howard gets teased all the time because they said, "Howard, what happened? You went from a nice romantic comedy <laughs> to a dark thriller. What was going on in there?" <laughs> that was what we're back. Oh, you're showing up. Your skills. You're showing off. <laughs> you. Storytelling. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you got so where are these those other films? Where did they did they see them? Are they on a distribution yeah. or where can they're you see? Available, them? They're available online mm -hmm. at Studio Anansi. That's A N A N S I dot T V. Okay. Yes, and they yeah. have been uh, uh, shown exhaustively at festivals around the world and in the Caribbean. And for many years, they were available, particularly The Sweetest Mango and No Seed were available on DVD. Uh, so you could just tell you how long we've been in this. And um, <laughs> and um, The Sweetest Mango is now archived at the uh, Bell Lightbox uh, uh, Tips uh, Reference Library as the first Indigenous film for the Eastern Caribbean. It's okay. the first Indigenous feature film for Antigua and Barbuda. And we had no idea when we were doing it that it was also the first Indigenous feature film for the Eastern Caribbean. So it got archived here in Toronto because I'm also uh, a Canadian. And um, so we're really thrilled and excited by that. And a lot of universities and libraries have uh, taken this film and have shown it because it's about uh, love, uh, Car Caribbean, a love for the Caribbean, returning home, fitting back in after being away. And I think the whole idea of migration and returning is one that we thought is, oh, it's just our story. But no, 
it's our story as Caribbean it's everybody. You know, the moving around. Did it when you guys did it? Did you guys do? Were you the actors, or you just no, 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 no? We got some absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, you're, not Tyler, you're not Tyler Perry. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> okay, all right. So you, you selected some people that were look almost similar to you. Yes, yes. All right. Well, we're gonna see this uh, deep blue, and then we'll talk some more. Okay. Right, here we go. We'll put this on and there we go, deep blue people. I've always been fascinated by the ocean, but I have this one little problem. Mm -hmm. Can't swim. Why these people always want to build so close to the beach? If a hurricane comes, this whole project, this hotel will be flattened. This is my land, and I am free to do with it whatever I want to. You're nothing but a common thief. I don't need anybody coming here with a silver spoon stuck in the mouth, telling us how to run our business. Our solemn promise is to redesign and rebuild this coastline better than Mother Nature ever could. I got a fisherman here. He's got decompression sickness. Yeah, he needs attention immediately. When did paradise become merchandise? Wow. <laughs> wow, that was something there. And I guess and I guess it's the song now caution sign thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah. that's right. In that one. Yes. And it's really good. What? Yeah. <laughs> we gotta play this a few through of things. I really like it. Oh, I like it. I like you. the storyline, and it's true. And it tells people about um, and it tells people about like a lot of Caribbean people. They always don't like to go. They live there. They don't like to go to the water, or they don't want to take the, the lessons. Yes. And what? Yes. Well, let me tell you something. I'm the first one in the water when I get there. If I get there enough time, that I can get to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw my cousins and aunts and different people. They were they were like, "Oh, we're gonna oh, hold on, we'll come." And they're like flagging their bathing suit out the. <laughs> and I'm I like mean, saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> "You we guys don't have... go to the water. What's wrong with you?" Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we even have a lot of fishermen who can't swim. Wow. Yeah, yeah. they work underwater every day, and then they have they have a, an issue with the boat, and then we find out, you know, this person couldn't swim. Yeah, but it's very important to know how to do some kind of basicness, you know. But yeah. you realize it because they don't even go in the the water like that. Me, I'm in the water. Like they call us. I tell my family like when we go, like, listen, if you want to see me, you come to the beach because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am not coming all the way from Canada where we got no water like that, no beach yeah. like that, to sit in the house on the porch swinging along talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I will tell people that. That's a very important um, scene in, in the movie yeah. and in the story. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's going to be something. So has that been released yet or not yet? Well, we had it has been released. We had a premiere in Antigua in March. And uh, then we were in New York. And we were basically showing it to Antiguans and Barbudans. And uh, uh, we had a screening in Montserrat. And then in in New York to the Antiguan and Barbudan community there. So in here in Toronto, yeah, it's our first. it's our big outing. This is the Canadian premiere with a very diverse audience. 
you know, you know, they have the saying dance abroad, dance a yard before you dance abroad. So we shared it with okay. our people and we, they gave us their blessing. <laughs> you know, your home crowd is always the toughest crowd. You know, yes. it will be really nice now to just uh, be in an audience with um, a very diverse audience and get their thoughts and feelings about this story and how they feel about, you know, what we're saying about the environment and what we as Caribbean people need to do. So where can they see this film? Like, you know, when it's released, is it, is it a paid thing? Would people got to pay for it? Yes, well, the, the screening that is happening here in Toronto is happening at the St. Lawrence Center for the Arts. And okay. it's happening on uh, September 16th. And it's, uh, it's not just the screening. We're having a whole Antigua and Barbuda showcase of, um, <laughs> we will be, we will uh, feature Caution, the reggae ambassador will be performing. And uh, along with Maurice Gregory, um, he's a Grammy award winning singer. He has a, he wrote the theme song for our film called yeah. Beautiful. And uh, Maurice is gonna be there performing as well. And we're gonna have a Q and A where we will, uh, the audience will be able to engage with us and, and learn more about, you know, the process and why we decided to tell the story. And it is also, believe it or not, an opportunity for all the Canadian actors to finally see themselves because only one of them came to Antigua for the premiere. Yeah. And uh, so they're all waiting. So the actors will yeah, be so there. A few of the Canadian actors actually haven't seen Haven't the film seen yet. it yet. You know? Yeah. So they're going to be there on September the 16th. Yeah, so it's going to be. So you're going to have a, a barbe, uh, Antiguan food there, your cuisine, or you're going to. Well, Car well, I would like to say Caribbean food, Caribbean okay. uh, hors d'oeuvres. A little a VIP reception will happen uh, prior to the film where mm -hmm. we have, um, you know, the actors and the media, and it will be an opportunity for people to meet and greet and all of that before we go in to the actual um, screening. Oh, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, nice event. I'm there. I want to see it. I want to see you guys. I, you know, it, it be something. Yeah. So, what's up next after this? Are you guys working on another project or? Well, we always have something in the pipeline. I'll tell you that. Um, um, right now, we have a. Uh, Taking the film on the festival. Yes, we're going to do the festival circuit first. And. Um, then we have a drama series that we have worked on before that we will continue doing called Paradise View. We're doing another okay. two, another 10 episodes of that, but that will be in the new year. Um, but for now, it's still fresh and it's still new with Deep Blue, where we have submitted to a number of festivals. We are actually I got selected to be in the Trinidad and Tobago International Film Festival. So that's coming up right after Toronto. That's on September 24th. It's screening in Trinidad. So yeah. you with them, are you so you're gonna be with um Lovelace, Miss Lovelace? Yes, absolutely. You wonder how I know you wonder how I know her because I interviewed her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yes, yes. Yes. She had a blast. She yes. said, I'm coming to Trinidad, you're staying at my house. I say you where do I try to take you up on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a friend and colleague. So we'll get to reconnect with and that's the beauty of um festivals in the region, you know, because we're separated by water. We don't get to see each other and we're so close and yet we're so far. So celebrations like a film festival in, in Trinidad, which has the premier uh, Caribbean film festival. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be a really, really nice experience. Well, I'm telling you, I'm so happy and I'm so proud of the filmmakers coming out from the Caribbean and actually showcasing and, and giving people the opportunity that, yes, you guys are at the same level as these ones up in North mm -hmm. America and stuff, so you guys can do this stuff. So yeah. we actually, so, and I had some other filmmakers said that they're going to be filming, um, but they're not from the Caribbean, but they're from, they're from up here mm -hmm. and they're going to be doing something in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and as uh, you know, my family, like on the, oh, my last name is Bostic. So, yeah. um, my family on the Bostic side seems to say, we, we don't have to stay in, uh, like in Barbie, we can live anywhere. We're in the Caribbean. Oh, <laughs> so, <that's amazing. laughs> yeah. 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 I know, I know the name Bostic from, uh, you know, the burning flames. Yes. Yeah. They had a female singer 
with the band once, and her her, her last name was Bostic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I have I have a big family. This and a lot of them are my family. So we definitely <laughs> have Bostics. We have Bells. We have Thompsons, Brathwaites, Yeras, mm-hmm. Waltrus. Oh, yeah. It's a very very and, and they're all spread out all over the place. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> they decided to move. They said we we don't have to just stay in Barbados. We can. We can go to yeah. Panama, yeah. we can go to St. Kitts, we can live in Trinidad. I have families that live in Trinidad that are, but you go to their house and you see um, the Barbados flag on one side and then you see the Trinidad flag. <laughs> so they're showing both the cultures and it's so funny because then they, but they make all the food, you know, it's so funny to make the Trinidadian food and they make the Asian food. Hey, like, oh, okay. <laughs> But anyways, well, yeah, you know, so that's something that you're you're going to be doing. So, are there any um, shout outs that you guys are going to want to give any people that's been supportive of you guys over the years? Oh, well, yes, well, over the years, uh, so many. But I think uh, in recent times, the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Office, especially the one based here in Toronto, has been very, very uh, good to us in helping to get caution to uh, be here um, and for some of the other Antiguan participants to, uh, in the film festival to come up. And, um, you know, uh, well, Magico, they're based in Antigua, the product placement for the film and the support for what we're doing uh, going forward that they have expressed an interest in, you know, seeing this film um, get as far as it could get. You know, and we have the um, Third Horizon, the distribution company that has uh, Studio Nancy, that television platform we told you about, where you can see our films. They have also been uh, very supportive of um, us, us and getting the film around. I mean, the, the list is very, very long. So I think um, I just want to say we're grateful because uh, with the support we've gotten, we have taken it and we've propelled ourselves forward. You know, yeah. Okay. All right. So, because a lot of people be watching these things, I'm going to see who, who's going to, what they going to mention. <laughs> no, that, that's it's so tough. funny. It's no. so funny. They wait for that. You know, I'm like, come yeah. on now. You guys watch the whole interview. And this is what you're waiting for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess, well, and a, a big thank you to Sandy DeFreitas of uh, the founder of Compest, which okay. is the uh, film festival that is hosting us. Uh, here in Toronto, that okay. this film festival has been around for 18 years, and their their mission is to bring communities together. So they do its music as well as art, and um, and it's quite exciting that they have carved out a spot for an Antigua and Barbuda showcase, which is not only showing our feature film but some short films from emerging Antigua and uh, Barbuda. A filmmaker, so that's pretty exciting, you know, that she will spotlight a country. I don't know if you remember years ago when TIFF spotlighted Nigeria and the Nigerians came out in all their glory, you know. So, we we're hoping with the spotlight being on Antigua and Barbuda that they will be coming out here in Toronto to see what is it that's happening back home, you know. Well, I'm so glad that, that you know, because a lot of people hear of Antigua but they don't really hear of it like that. So yeah. now, for the yeah. last few months, everybody's been talking Antigua, Barbuda. We got blah, 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 yeah. this is happening. Yes. Yes. So now you're getting that buzz, and now you're in. You're in with the buzz too. So it's yes. like it's a lot of people. Oh, oh yeah, I remember Antigua. You know, <laughs> <laughs> everybody talks about Grenada, St. Yeah. Vincent. You know, yes. Barbados, all the other yes. places. But they, you know, exactly. some of these islands, like yeah. you know, Domin- I had somebody from Dominica was a filmmaker too, and they came, and it's like wow, you know, finally. You got the the smaller ones, the smaller islands and stuff are getting the recognition that they should. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you could tell everybody if they want to reach out to you or follow you on social medias, what where yes. they can. Well, we are on Facebook. It's uh, Hammer Films Antigua. You can follow us there, and we also have an Instagram page that's uh, hammerfilms.com at at Hammer Films, and. Um, if you want to send us um, anything, uh, a showreel, your bio, your pictures and whatnot, you could send it 
to Hammer Films Antigua at gmail.com. And that's a good place for us to connect if you're interested in, in being involved in anything that we're doing, or you just want to um, uh, know us better and perhaps collaborate on, on other film projects. Because believe it or not, we have met a lot of people who work have worked in our films through showing our films, which was the case okay. with, the, with the skin. We got and if people people. want to submit something, an idea to you guys, you guys are open exactly. to helping them. Exactly. Okay. We were, we're very open to all of that. You know, okay. we, we think that collaborations are very important, you know, in making this industry thrive when you come from the Eastern Caribbean, you know? Yes. And I hope, and I hope we collaborate with somebody that got some money. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well, that's a good customers are welcome because <laughs> <laughs> these movies ain't cheap for people oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. unless you're going unless you're going over to africa to fill them a lot of them do <laughs> with the budgets yeah. but anyways i do want to thank you guys got to come back again when you have something else and yes, you know you will we we'll just reach out. Don't be saying, "Oh, I don't know." No, that's no. What we will reach out because you're supposed to be in one of our next productions. Oh yes, that's right. You guys got to reach out. So I'm gonna hold you all to that. Don't wait the no, whole oh, ten years. Oh yeah, you're like, what? well, we'll hold you to it. Do you? Don't worry. We're always looking for fresh faces. <laughs> all right, all right. So, anyways, I do want to thank both of you guys for telling us about your journey, the long journey, and the journey continues. It in does. the filmmaking industry they're all open to different kinds of films so just don't think it's just one type of film people out there make sure you you're, you know they're open and even if you have something that you want to submit or an idea they're open to receive it and look and look at it maybe not in the like, next two weeks because no, um not in the next two weeks <laughs> <laughs> But they'll get in October to you, along with the other filmmaker, because this is the this is yeah. September is the month where everybody's all over the place. So you gotta yeah. just wait. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I do want to thank the viewers for night tonight and watching, tuning in tonight with uh Mitzi and Howard Allen of Hama Films. So good night, everybody, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.